Good morning and thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Ron Markert. I am from a uh, medical school in Ohio in the United States. Uh, we are not a big medical center. We're not a giant research center. What we do very well is educate medical students and residents and fellows. And part of that education is teaching people how to do research and helping faculty who want to develop research skills uh, do that well. So this talk I'll give you today is not anything dramatic clinically, but uh, my goal in presenting it to you is to show how we uh, take a topic of interest to a group who have an interest and advance that over time to better and better research. <laughs> so this study I'll show you today is um, um, the first study in a line of studies that we're going to do better and better as we learn from our earlier studies. And I'm using this example to show you where we're going to learn and what we're going to do to advance this line of research. And this might be, a, be applicable to any of you who are in a setting that, uh, say, is not a big grant institution, uh, short on funds, and faculty and medical students, residents, want to learn how to do research. Uh, my job as the vice chair, I guess doesn't have that here, uh, University Professor of Medicine and Surgery. I'm glad the surgery is up there because I work in both medicine and surgery. I'm vice chair for research in medicine, but I essentially do the same thing for surgery. And this will be a surgery example today. It'll be a trauma example because we have a very active uh, trauma department in our hospital where I am based. Uh, you probably know in the United States we have lots of gunshot wounds and stabbings and so forth. And so oftentimes we uh, want to do research in those areas. And today is actually a study on people that have three, four, five rib fractures. Uh, sometimes uh, old folks that might fall, but sometimes uh, young men that have been in fights and wound up with uh, some broken bones. So anyway, that'll be the, the uh, subject of the example I'll give you today. Uh, these are my uh, co-authors, and they're all either, uh, I, I'm a educational psychologist and a statistician, so I'm not a clinician or a physician. Uh, don't ask me any fancy medical questions, so uh, I'll have to model my way through those. But I think this is essentially a self-explanatory uh, study. But the other folks on there are all either surgeons, trauma surgeons, or residents who uh, are going to go into trauma surgery or some type of, of surgery. And we're going to talk about the impact of obesity and diabetes as far as the outcomes for these folks that come in with a number of rib fractures. So that's the, that's the topic. And you'll see where this was a good first study, but also a flawed first study that's going to lead us to improve our methods for the, for the next study, which will come up in early 2018. So anyway, this may be information that you're already aware of, but just uh, for background, these are the obesity prevalences that you would find in the U.S. Uh, and uh, worldwide. And you can see an area where we're probably not proud that we're in the lead, or close to the lead in the world, is in obesity with about 36% of our folks uh, in that category. Uh, worldwide, it's uh, closer to, to 13%. And interestingly, just yesterday, I was reading the English language newspaper in Dubai, and there was a full page story on obesity among children in Dubai. I don't know if people uh, read that. I, uh, but one of the things I noticed was how um, few people know the term BMI. It was amazing. I, so I, I don't know this part of the world, but to me, it said that. Uh, the awareness will be starting to pick up in, in this country and in this region. I imagine it probably already uh, has. So, and diabetes, um, 
another story of a serious medical problem. Uh, the U.S. rate and the worldwide rate is fairly similar. Uh, but you can see we have a fair number of people in the world, in the United States, uh, with diabetes, with obesity. No, no surprise there. So our surgeon's interest, these are very practical people. They say, okay, we have people come in with rib fractures and who are diabetic, and we've noticed informally these people are slower to recover. They're more problematic, even though their injuries might be the same as uh, uh, somebody else who was not diabetic or obese. So what's, what's going on here? Let's, let's look into this. Now keep in mind, this is gonna be a line of research. This isn't just answer one specific question. It's going to answer this question over a number of studies, but it will probably lead to related studies as well. So it's a long-term thing. And again, it's folded into what we do with our residents, that is, teach them how to do research. And so this is a topic that isn't going to, are going to go away. So we have the advantage of senior people having done the first studies. We get a first year intern. We can get that person interested in the study and it can go to a point where it exhausts itself. So here was the aim of this particular study to determine the impact of diabetes and obesity on the management of patients who sustain rib fractures as a result of trauma. And like I said, that could be a person who falls, a person who uh, is in a car accident, probably the most common case, uh, some interpersonal violence. Uh, Dayton, the city that we live in in Ohio, is not a prosperous city. It's a nice place to live if you're in the suburbs, but in the city, it can be kind of dangerous. And in our, our hospital, our hospital is located right in the middle of the city. So anyway, how did you get into this study and how did you not qualify for this study? Inclusion and exclusion criteria. You had to have a blunt chest wall trauma uh, causing rib fractures. Uh, at our particular hospital, which is a level one trauma center. Now, people from around the world, I don't know if they know uh, how we classify trauma centers in the U.S., but level one is the highest level, meaning that we have to have all specialties, neurosurgeons, uh, critical care, uh, pulmonology, uh, trauma surgeons, generalists, the whole uh, group of people, all the specialties, uh, available 24 hours a day. They might not necessarily be in the hospital, but they can be there in 15, 20 minutes. So a level one hospital not only has to have all the facilities, all the modern equipment, and all the nursing staff trained, but they have to have all physicians, all areas, no matter what problem you have. So you can see that's quite an expensive operation. Uh, so, we are a level one trauma center um, in the state of Ohio. I, I guess I should have my surgeon's friends here, but there's probably about six. So out of uh, hundreds of hospitals in Ohio, there's probably about six trauma, uh, level one trauma centers that can handle the most severe patient injuries. So what often happens is something happens in the city, the ambulance picks them up, and they say, oh, but this guy better go to, doesn't have the name of our hospital there, it's called Miami Valley Hospital. We better take this person to Miami Valley Hospital. That's where he or she's going to get the best care. Okay, so obesity, you had to be uh, 30 or over uh, to get into this study. And who was excluded? Those who died shortly after they got to the hospital of their injuries or something else because we needed to follow them through time after they were treated and so people who died quickly were not included. Uh, people who had uh, uh, knife wounds and the like were not included. Don't ask me exactly why the docs uh, uh, would have their explanation for this. But uh, also uh, head injuries trying, uh, trying to make things complicated so people that had head injuries were also excluded. So you're in the study here if you had some rib fractures and you survived long enough to be 
in the hospital for some period of time and eventually <coughs> be discharged or in a few cases uh, pass away. So uh, here, here's another uh, idea as far as how we develop studies. We're going to, and it's not up on this slide, but later it'll tell you that we're going to use patients from 2013 and 14. Uh, we did this study the beginning of this year, and you say, well, why didn't you get the most recent patients? Well, we're going to save the most recent patients for our second and third study down the line. We're learning from doing this study, and so it's 2013, 2014. It's going to come up here if I was on this slide. But anyway, we, for this one-year period of time, we had this number of patients who qualified I think that totals to 213, 149 in the obese group, and 64, or 149 in the non-obese group, and 64 in the obese group. Uh, me being a statistician, I had to tell you this part. Uh, we're going to use the appropriate statistical test for uh, comparing the two groups on a variety of variables. Uh, because we had relatively small samples, and not normally distributed data. We're using these two, what are called uh, non-parametric tests. I'm sure you're familiar with chi-square, maybe not the Mann-Whitney test when we're dealing with real numbers. Now, uh, we would have liked to have had diabetes as an independent variable. Remember our title, it's half of what we're interested in. Now, our problem was that we're getting this data from charts, and where someone's uh, weight status is always going to be recorded, the circumstances of an admission might have involved not asking the person about whether they were diabetic or not. So if you remember earlier, I said that in the U.S. about 9%, 10% of people are diabetic. So we would have expected to have 25 or so diabetics in our 213, but we only had five, which to me, and again being familiar with this hospital, we're going to have actually more than 10% of admissions be diabetic patients, probably closer to 10 or 20%. So what this tells us is these weren't documented when they came in. Now that's a, a, a good quality improvement point because we can go back to the hospital staff and say, you know, patients that come in the trauma may not be documented for some of the comorbidities that we would like to document, one of them being uh, diabetes. What it tells us as researchers uh, is that the next study might better be a prospective study where we're gathering data as patients actually uh, are real time into the medical center. That way we can make sure our nurse researchers are asking them or documenting whether they're diabetic or not. So this was a flaw we would not know about unless we did the study because we were assuming diabetes would be documented in these patients just like they are in just like it would be in all the internal medicine patients that come into the hospital the people with heart attacks and, and the like, not surgical patients, at least not at first. Uh, but with surgery, it wasn't happening as well. Uh, that, at least that's our suspicion. So, me being a statistician, we had to say, well, we still want to work diabetes into our model. We'd like it as an independent variable, but we're going to have to keep it as a covariate to see what kind of relationships it, uh, what relationship it has to the outcomes that we're going to mention here shortly, but realizing that we can't use it the way we really want to. An injury severity score, I don't know if that's an international index or, or not, but in the U.S. it's a scale uh, that measures uh, various aspects of your uh, injuries in terms of how severe they are by way of bleeding and broken bones and your cognition and so forth and so on. So we wanted to factor out the injury severity 
because we weren't interested in that, we're interested in diabetes and uh, obesity. So anyway, these folks, these 213 folks had about three and a half rib fractures, some seven, eight, some just a couple. And as far as obesity, we're, from a research standpoint, we were reassured here because our 30% obesity rate was pretty similar to what you'd find in the US. So that was good from a research standpoint. But here was our, our one of our major concerns, just 2.4% were diabetic. And that's probably not the real case. The real case is it'd probably be closer to 10, 15% or something like that. But again, it's probably a documentation problem that we have to solve in our, in our next study. So, uh, how do these groups differ when they, what we call pre-admission characteristics? Now, you know as researchers, if you're interested in whether some independent variable is related to some dependent variable, you'd like these possible con confounders not to be different. You would like them to be the same, the obese group and the non-obese group, to be similar on demographic and, and any clinical characteristics that you're interested in. So what, what happened here? Uh, age and gender, they're virtually the same. That's good from a research standpoint. So it's not going to be their age or gender being related to the uh, uh, outcomes. It's going to be something else, hopefully. Uh, race. Uh, mostly Caucasian in our uh, area, so both the Caucasian rate for the two groups were, were high, but there were more Caucasians in the obese group than the non-obese group, and the p-value uh, showing that is significant. So when we get to the fancy multivariate analysis, we're going to want to control for that. And same with injury severity score. Um, the surgeons tell me once you get above 15, that's a pretty serious uh, injury level. They use that as a rough guide. So both of the groups were roughly in that area of 15, but the obese group was uh, uh, a little higher on the injury severity score. So we're going to want to control for that as well. The mortality rate was uh, uh, 4.7, 2.0, and um, there I knew I've heard that someplace. I don't need that. That's okay. That's okay. You can just turn it off. Um, so no difference in mortality. So what this was telling us is we're going to look at obesity and non-obesity and whether they differ in outcomes related to a hospital stay. But other things that could be do, uh, related to those outcomes are uh, being Caucasian and having a higher injury severity score. So we're going to covary out uh, race, injury, severity score, and our friend diabetes because we can't deal with it the way we want to. So this gets us to what the we're interested in terms of outcomes. Univariate analysis just means one dependent variable at a time. So our the two groups differ in these hospital outcomes. You know, we're not following them once they leave the hospital. This is trauma. They're primarily care uh, interested in patching people up before they get out of the hospital. So the obese group. Uh, required ventilation about twice as often as the non-obese group. The ventilator days, now that's really going to be pretty much a proxy for the ven ventilation requirement, but if you do it in terms of days, the obese group also has more, more days. Uh, length of stay in the ICU, again, more for the obesity group. The length of stay for the hospital, nine and a half days versus six days, again, the obese group is higher. And there's no difference in mortality, even though it's double in the obese group, there's so few mortalities that they're not statistically significant. 
So now we have these folks as possible predictor or of uh, possible uh, outcomes of interest once we control for our uh, covar uh, our, our uh, covariates. So let's see what happens now. So now we're doing uh, multivariate logistic regression, trying to see which of these predictors that were significant one-on-one -on -one with the outcome were, were related. So we are going to control for race, diabetes, and injury severity score. And when we do that, the only outcome that remains significant is ventilation required, which says, if you're not a big statistical person, uh, with the odds ratio 2.51, is that uh, those that had ventilation were two and a half times more likely to be obese. Those that had ventilation were two and a half times more likely to be obese. And if you look at this prospectively, you would say obesity is a risk factor for requiring ventilation. Now, as far as uh, spending time in the ICU, either you were zero, no ICU, or one or more, uh, you were in the ICU, uh, that difference washes out when we control for race, diabetes, and injury severity score. So significant on a univariate basis, but once you control for other things related to ICU, LOS, then it's not significant. And the same with hospital. And we divided that as uh, length of stay in the hospital four days or fewer versus five days or more. So that turns out not to be significant once we control for those three factors. So if you go back, ventilation significant, length of stay significant, when you control for things we know that are related to the obesity, then everything washes away except ventilation required. And so what, what were the limitations of this study? Well, one institution, we're a big institution, have lots of trauma, but uh, we can't necessarily generalize to hospitals across the country or hospitals in uh, other countries. And as I mentioned a couple of times, the fact that we probably underrepresented diabetes is a weakness of this study. And so uh, our next studies will say, okay, we don't want to do this study again and wind up with a 2.5% diabetes rate. So does that mean we have to do the study prospectively, get patients as they actually come to the hospital, have our research nurses document everything we want so we know we are getting an adequate representation of things like diabetes. <coughs> so this is what the surgeon would say. This is their conclusion on this study, and I'll let you uh, read it. Essentially, it says we've got to be more aware and more concerned with the care of rib fracture patients in trauma to try to avoid some bad morbidity or mortality. So, what I wanted to emphasize, and maybe why I'm listed there as a keynote address, I'm not quite sure why that took place, but I am anyway. Uh, and so I wanted to make this a little broader than just these results, which I say aren't overly dramatic, uh, but we've learned a lot. We've learned how to gather data better. We've learned how to do the statistical analysis appropriately. We've learned uh, what kind of sample size we might need. We now can go on to the later years in uh, patients entering the hospital, which we would like to get uh, involved more so than those from 2013, 2014. So we're, we're pleased with this study, but we don't see it as the end of the road. We're, we'll get future residents and fellows and uh, faculty involved in following up this particular study. <coughs>